Welcome back to the Mad Spideyverse. I'm Mad Spidey, and thank you once again for tuning in my channel. Uh, today, I thought, let's do another one of my comic wish lists. Now, this will be part number eight. Um, so, as I've said plenty of times before, with my comic wish list, I do these particular videos to obviously, you know, share with people what I collect, what I love, and mainly, obviously, what I'm after. Um, the other the other reasons are more, you know, sort of personal. Like, it's, it's actually good to keep a record. Um, like, you know, I've got written lists and computer lists and all this sort of stuff. Um, and some of the times I don't necessarily have them on me. Uh, may not have them on my phone or, you know, written down on a piece of paper or something like that. So it's quite often if I'm, out and you know at a convention or you know a small fair or something like that and i'm like you know oh, i'll just have a quick squiz through my you know one through one of my videos I'm like oh i do need that you know um in saying that like obviously i don't do these videos for people to say oh spidey you know needs this book oh you know a-okay in this book or stuff and i that's not what they're meant for because obviously a lot of these books are big big boy books um, especially for me, obviously, um, may not be, some of them are, you know, it might be like a 10 or $20 book over in the States, uh, but over here it might be a hundred dollar book. Um, I'm on a small budget. I do my best, obviously, you know, sometimes I can get lucky. Sometimes I'm able to save some money and buy some, you know, decent books. Uh, but yeah, in, in no way, shape or form is this any way of, you know, begging for AOKs or anything like that because it's expensive to ship over here and it's not what it's the thing. It's, as I said, it's more for me personally, uh, sharing with, you know, the viewers, my subscribers, um, with the community, you know, what I'm after, you know, even if, you know, like, I know for argument's sake, like, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 1. Been a book I've been after for a long time. It's one of five books that I needed for my total ASM run. Um, now, obviously, there's only four because thanks to my good mate over in the States, Becker uh, or Beckerman, he, you know, had one, and I was able to get it at a, you know, get it at a great price. So, um, yeah. So as I said, this is more for record for me. And for my viewers to, you know, show, as I said, what I love, what I'm hunting. Um, and yeah, just to just to share it with you. So and I do tend to get decent views on these videos. Um, in saying that, probably the, you know, average view time is probably about two minutes. And most of these videos go for about 20. Um, but it is a comic series I do love to, to do. Um, and in, also in saying that, it is something that, you know, I did ask early on. I think I did maybe at episode two or three, should I continue? And yeah, the general consensus was just keep going. Um, and I've always wanted to do my YouTube channel as, you know, I'll just do what I want to do, not what other people, you know, say I should do, you know, and things like that. Like, obviously, my channel has been around for well over two years now. I've done well for my expectations, may not be as well as some other channels that have been around less and have two or three times as many subs, but I'm fine with that. Anyway, I've already waffled on for long enough and everybody knows I do waffle and I do waffle a lot on my pre-recorded videos, so let's get stuck into it. So all these books today, uh, once again, all Marvel books because that's all I collect. My favorite is obviously Silver, Bronze and Copper Age Marvel. Um, trying to go after some keys, some stuff to fill in some runs and things like that. Um, and in saying that, um, all these books are all Silver Age books. Um, so the first one is going to be Tales to a... Oh, sorry. Ah, bad start. Rewind. If I knew how to actually do that. <laughs> Tales of Suspense, number 57. And it is the first appearance of Hawkeye. Um, now, once again, like, generally, whenever I say these books, I sort of say, you know, availability over here in Australia, pricing, things like that. Not necessarily, like, specific pricing, but big, middle, high, whichever. Uh, but, yeah, first Hawkeye is one of those sort of books that, um, 
you don't see very often over here. Uh, I may have seen it once or twice, and I think the cheapest I've seen it is maybe a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred dollars. And it was a, I think it was a low grade slab. I think it was might have been a three or a four. Uh, but that's yeah, I haven't seen it very often. So, uh, but it's definitely a book that I, it's on my list. Definitely one that I want to knock off at some point, hopefully. Um, but yeah, it's on the list. And I want to try and get it at some point. So the next one I have, I've never seen until recent times. And that's Tales to Astonish number 13, which is the first appearance of Groot. So surprisingly enough, like the Guardians of the Galaxy was not until like the Bronze Age. Um, when you actually saw the original lineup of the Guardians, which didn't actually have Groot in it. Um, but then they added Groot in the newer lineup, obviously, that you see in the MCU. So, Rocket and Groot uh, are two of my favourite characters from, from Guardians of the Galaxy, so I've always wanted first Groot. And as I said, I've never, ever seen that book ever here before, um, but in saying that, I have actually seen it twice in the last 12 months. Ridiculous pricing. Like, it was raw, and it was like $2,000, and I'm like, nah. I, I want the book, but there's no way in hell I can afford that. So, yeah, as I always say, never say never, but it's definitely on the list, and it's definitely a book I want to get. Um, going on to the next one is Fantastic Four, number four. Um, so, Fantastic Four, number four, is the first Silver Age appearance of Submariner. Um, so it's got that uh, classic sort of cover with Submariner, you know, trying to steal, basically, Sue Storm. And, um, yeah, it's, it's always been, like... Submariner's been one of those sort of characters that, you know, I sort of... You know, like, I haven't collected a lot of his stuff. Um, but I, I do love the character. He's a very interesting character, and I've always uh, wanted his first appearance. Because, obviously, I can't afford Golden Age books, and Golden Age books is not really my thing. Um, if I ever got one, that's nice, but... It's not, you know, not really something that I'm after. Uh, but definitely in the Silver Age, which is where I start, basically, my collection. Um, first Submariner is definitely, or first Silver Age Submariner appearance is definitely one that I, uh, yeah, on the list and definitely want to get. Um, and I've never seen that book over here. It, it may be available. Somebody may have it, but I have never, ever seen it over here. Um, so, yeah, definitely on the list and definitely one I want to get eventually. Um, next one is Tales to Astonish, number 44, which is the first appearance and origin of the Wasp. Um, it's very, it's, and when you, it's quite often when you see a lot of first appearances of, you know, key characters, main characters, things like that, they're not always on the cover. Because uh, quite often you'll have, like, first cameo, first full appearance, uh, and then you have, like, first cover appearance. Well, she's actually on the cover of this book, uh, but her origin is all uh, is also told in this particular book as well. Uh, but, yeah, it's definitely... Uh, I've seen it once, only once. I can't even remember what price it was. Uh, I think it was probably about five, six years ago. It was something exorbitant. Uh, and, I, yeah, I wasn't able to afford it, obviously, or I bought other books and prioritised at the time. Uh, but definitely a book I want to grab it at some point. Um, the next one is X-Men number four, or Uncanny X-Men number four, whichever way you want to look at it. The original number four. It is the first appearance of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. And it is also the second appearance of Magneto. I think it's also the first appearance of Toad as well. So if you're watching this and you get this far, let me know. But I'm pretty sure it's the first appearance of Toad as well. Uh, X-Men 4 has always been an expensive book over here. I have actually seen it quite a few times, but it's always been multiple thousands of dollars, uh, whether it's been raw or slabbed or whichever. It's always been a pricey book. But in saying that, having a look on... Not necessarily, I haven't looked on eBay, but uh, I've noticed on IG um, and a few other bits and pieces, I noticed it has actually dropped a little bit lately. Um, no, I'm not becoming a speculation channel. That is not my thing. I don't watch spec, but I have actually noticed a bit of a drop in price. Um, so maybe, maybe I might be able to pick it up. 
um, you know, in a low grade raw, you know, fingers crossed anyway, that I might be able to grab it. But yeah, awesome cover. Love that book. Um, like Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. So yeah, definitely ones that I, I definitely want to cross off the list. So uh, on to the next one is Daredevil number seven. Now, Daredevil number seven is the first appearance of the red suit. So the classic red suit. So obviously the first six issues is in the yellow costume. Uh, number seven is that classic battle with Submariner on the front cover in his new red suit, um, which, you know, you basically see, you know, all the way. Like, obviously, it has a, there's been a few differences. You know, there was, like, the battled armor one and things like that. Um, but, yeah, the, the classic red suit, which he's pretty much had for most of the time he's been around, um, that is his, at its first appearance. So, um, and I have seen it a handful of times. Not really you know, price that I'd want to pay, but it looks like it could be a, an affordable book if I actually chased it. So, you know, maybe I might stumble across it, you know, on eBay or IG or something and, you know, get it at a reasonable price. That would be fantastic. So, yeah, definitely on the list um, to get at some point. Uh, two books left. The next one is Journey Into Mystery, annual number one, and it is the... Its main draw is it's the first appearance of Hercules. Like, it is the first appearance of Zeus as well. Um, but that is its main draw card, is it's the first appearance of Hercules. Um, you have that battle on the front cover between Herc and Thor. Um, I've seen it a couple of times, but it's, yeah, once again, it shouldn't... I, I, I personally think it shouldn't be that an expensive a book, but... I've said it a million times when you're dealing with Australia and Australian prices and things like that, everything's way overinflated um, because obviously, you know, one rarity, two, you got to get it over from, you know, the States or wherever it comes from um, or where it's, you know, readily available. So everything just gets, you know, shot into the stratosphere when it comes to pricing. So, but yeah, definitely a book. Um, it's actually been on my list for quite a while because Journey into Mystery, like, and I've said it before, um, you know, Tales to Astonish, Tales of Suspense, um, Strange Tales, Journey into Mystery and things like that. Like, all those books from that era, um, you, you do come across them quite a bit. It's quite often the same ones time and time again, which you already have. Uh, but Journey into Mystery is one that's, it's a title that you don't see over here very often at all. I may have maybe five or six Journey into Mystery books at most. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can pick up more because it, it would be, it is a, a series that I'm slowly sort of knocking off, you know, one at a time. Uh, I do have plenty of the other ones, obviously a lot of the big keys I'm missing. Um, but Journey into Mystery, I'd love to get some more, but yeah, as I said, it, it's just, it's just getting a bit hard to get them over here. So, but yeah, definitely on the list. Um, and definitely, hopefully one I can get at some point. Uh, so last book is... Captain America number 100. Now, that is the first solo title of Captain America in the Silver Age. So, obviously, the original, original series that was done in the 1940s um, was, you know, Cap's first series. Obviously, he went into the deep freeze, you know, he came back in Avengers. Um, but his actual first solo title is actually listed as Captain America 100, and they did that. I know they did that with uh, Hulk, and they did that with um, Thor and Captain America and things like that. Obviously, they were in, like, Tales of Suspense and Journey to Mystery and, you know, Tales to Astonish and stuff like that. Um, and then went to, the, went to their solo title. Whatever the last number was, that was what the next one. So I'm assuming that, because it was... I think it was from Tales of Suspense, usually with Iron Man. Um, I'm, a, I'm assuming number 99 was the last issue of that series, and then Cap started at 100. So, but yeah, classic, classic cover. It's always a book I've always really, really wanted. I don't have enough Captain America books, unfortunately, especially a lot of the older ones. I have a few in the sort of from the, you know, the 90s and 2000s. I have a few bits and pieces, but I'd really love some old, old Captain America books. Obviously, Silver Age, not 
golden age because it's too expensive. Um, but yeah, I'd love some more Captain America books. I, I was lucky enough to knock off one of these wish lists, which was uh, First Falcon. I was able to knock that off last year, which is fantastic. Um, but I'd really love this issue 100 because, yeah, it's just such a classic cover that it's just, yeah, awesome. So that is it. Um, as I said, these videos tend to go for quite a lot. If you have actually watched the entire video, I do greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, as I expect, I, most people's attention span for pre-recorded videos is generally sort of two to five minutes somewhere in that sort of vicinity. So if you had, have actually watched the whole entire video, I do greatly appreciate it. Um, but let's let's end it. Gone too long already. Um, but thank you for watching. Thank you for being a subscriber. If you're not obviously subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. And obviously, you know, do all the other usual YouTube stuff. You know, hit, hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment if you wish to. If you've got any more information about these particular books and things like that, it's always greatly appreciated. So anyway, that'll do for this particular video. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day and Spidey out.